this is Chicho. Welcome to ASMR Math, right? Now, what we did in the previous video was basically take a look at the power of zero, the main, um, one of the main properties of zero, right, in mathematics. And that being that if we had multiple things multiply together to give us zero, um, what we can do in mathematics is split each one of those things, right? May they be functions, may they be variables, set each one of those things equal to zero and solve for the variable. And that's basically sort of the beginning stages of us analyzing functions because when we solve for an equation, for a function that equals zero, what that does is uh, gives us the x-intercepts, right? The solutions, the factors, the roots of a function. And that's the beginning stages of us, us analyzing functions and trying to find out what their end behavior is, right? And that's what we talked about in the last video. And during that video, I mentioned that um, we also have a restriction in mathematics, um, which comes with zero, right? It's sort of um, uh, the, uh, the one thing that we cannot do in mathematics. And that is basically, we cannot divide by zero, right? And I mentioned that, um, I've already put out uh, four videos regarding regarding that restriction, why we can't divide by zero and what happens if we do divide by zero, right? And we will be expanding on uh, that restriction a lot more in future videos. But what I wanted to do in this video is basically uh, share with you one of the sort of real life moments that I had um, with this restriction of with this restriction that we have with zero, with this inability of us being able to divide by zero, right? And um, it really, uh, it, was, it was amazing when I looked at, um, looked at this real world problem that I had had, or this, this question that I had had with me for many, many, many years, right? And all of a sudden, when I looked at it through the lens of mathematics, through the perspective of the language of mathematics, it sort of all made sense and the answer was obvious, right? That it was something that I had never thought of, right? And that's what I wanna do in this video, basically uh, share with you what this, um, what this property of zero uh, allowed me to do, uh, sort of to look at this, uh, you know, question I had had in my life uh, for a very, very long time. And as soon as it, uh, I looked at it through uh, a mathematical perspective, uh, the answer sort of became obvious, um, which again, really blew me away. Okay. Now, many, many years ago, jeez, um, it would have been 15, 16, 17 years ago or so, I sort of went on a information seeking period. I started, uh, you know, through circumstances and sort of life, life decisions and uh, coincidences, chances. Um, I found myself um, reading a lot of books, listening to a lot of uh, lectures and audio books and watching lectures and reading a lot of articles. And, uh, you know, during that, during that period, it lasted for about, uh, for a couple of years where I read multiple books and I've sort of mentioned some of those books in uh, uh, one of the first videos, I guess we put out uh, for the language of mathematics. Um, um, two of them or three of them being uh, uh, Brian Greene's Elegant Universe, uh, uh, which talks about string theory and some, some of the uh, some of the things that we know of the universe uh, or we knew of the universe back then, uh, which came out, um, I guess, late 1990s or so, right? Um, another um, book that I read during that period, uh, which was sort of connected with this, was um, um, Black Holes and Baby Universes by Stephen Hawkins, which was, uh, I believe it was um, five essays or lectures that Stephen Hawkins had given. And um, those were fantastic articles. I was, it was a very good book to read. And it was again talking about uh, 
you know the universe what we know of it right and the f you know the third book during that period that i read that um, sort of led me to this article that i'm about to show you and what i learned from this article was um, god's equation and i can't i can't remember who the author was i should have looked this up but um and the book was basically about um how uh, albert einstein came about proving uh with the help of many other people um the theory of relativity right and one thing that i learned from that book was that uh, einstein wasn't uh you know he didn't do this by himself uh, some of the mathematics he was trying to learn he was trying to use in his understanding um, or putting the papers together for the theory of relativity uh, was harder than he knew right so you know he had he had colleagues that he corresponded with physicists and mathematicians and he would you know through letters right they would go back and forward and you know they would talk about what Einstein was thinking about and you know through that he was able to put his theory of relativity together and the only way they were able to prove this theory which i believe i can't remember it exactly that led it led him into writing the um uh, that was in, in originally the special theory of relativity which led him to uh, write uh, put together um his concept of general relativity was uh, the correspondence that they went through through the um you know I, I don't know if i would call them technicians or whatnot but the scientists that collected the data um through one of their i think they went down to south america and whatnot it was an amazing story which basically um you know explained how the general and special theory of relativity came about right and when i was reading that book um it occurred to me that i never actually read einstein's uh, theory of relativity even though i'd studied in in university i'd never read it um which was sort of shocking to me that uh you know i've gone through high school and university getting my and just in case you don't know i you know have my degree from university f for uh geophysics and mathematics right and coming out of university with an honors degree in that with a mathematics minor i'd never read einstein's theory of relativity so i tracked it down online and um it actually wasn't that easy to do back in 2000 or 1999 or so and it was uh you know it was a little easier to do now and uh I was able to track down that paper from 1905 and it's you know basically a, a 110 years uh since he wrote it and it's um, on the electro the, the paper is called on the electrodynamics of moving bodies right and this is the paper um that i read right that answered one of the main questions that i had had in my life okay and that question that brought me to this paper okay the question that got me to reading those books uh the articles and listening to the lectures uh sort of on a major major uh information seeking phase that i was going one of the major information seeking phases that i was in uh, and that i have been in my life uh, was this i always wanted to know why we couldn't travel at the speed of light right through through school through uh, high school and university we've always been told that one of the restrictions we had in life is that we can't travel at the speed of light or greater than the speed of light right and the reasons you know we're always given is that oh you know if we travel to the speed of light time will stop right that it will take an infinite amount of energy for us for to get anything that has a mass to the speed of light right that uh, the mass of an object uh, will become infinite if they travel at the speed of light 
right? That um, the length of, uh, of anything will reduce down to zero if you travel at the speed of light, right? So these are always the reasons that are provided as to why we can't travel at the speed of light. But to me, those weren't the reasons of why we can't travel at the speed of light. Those were the consequences of us traveling at the speed of light. What would happen if we travel at the speed of light, right? So up to, I guess, 15, 16 years ago, I never knew why it was that we couldn't travel at the speed of light, right? Until I read Einstein's paper, right? On the theory of relativity, on the special theory of relativity, I guess. Um, and the paper is called On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies. And it was published on June 30th, 1905. Okay. And I never have read this before, um, or having read this before, I sort of went through, and this is me printing this off again. Uh, I found it again um, online, and you know, I read it again, uh, bef you know, for this video, um, just to remind myself what I had read, and to sort of make sure that I still remembered it accurately, right? And I tried to track down uh, uh, some of the other papers uh, that Einstein had written during that period that led up to um, the general theory of relativity. And they were, they were hard to find, those papers. Uh, I actually had to go to a couple of other, a couple of forums and, you know, I linked up to this paper, right, because I found it. And uh, on those forums, I sort of asked if, uh, um, you know, I sort of found out that Einstein had written, I believe, five uh, major papers during that period from the time he, re he wrote uh, uh, special relativity to the time he wrote general relativity um, regarding this topic, right? And uh, what I've done, because there were, you know, most people that didn't have those links, and there was one, one comment that provided the, you know, link to all those papers. and. Uh, what I found out was uh, one of the reasons that it was hard to find those papers, you know, uh, doing the search online, I assumed these things would pop up um, instantly, like they would be the top uh, searches, right? But they weren't. Uh, and one thing I found out was, uh, or I'm not sure if it's true or not, but uh, knowing copyright laws, um, you know, someone posted a comment saying that, uh, they weren't easy to find because of copyright laws, which is absolutely insane. You know, information uh, like this uh, should have no copyrights on it. Um, okay, as far as I'm concerned, um, or only copyright for the author for the original, you know, duration the copyright uh, was uh, was put in place for which was I believe 14 years or something like this or seven or 14 years right not um, based on the copyright laws that we have right now which are they're insane right life of the author plus a hundred years or 150 years or whatever it is right um, but I'm sort of digressing um, so let me show you why it is that we cannot travel at the speed of light and it's not because that you know our you know it will take an infinite amount of energy to reach that point uh not because our mass the mass of any matter-based object would become infinite that its length would become zero that that time would be you know stop right those aren't really the reasons why we can't travel at the speed of light those are the as far as i see it those are the consequences of us traveling at the speed of light or greater than the speed of light that's what happens if we end up ever traveling at the speed of light right breaking through that boundary right crossing that asymptote the reason that we can't travel at the speed of lights 
is because we get a division by zero in the equations, right? And that's, you know, when I write, read this paper, really blew me away because I never really understood why it was that we couldn't reach that point, right? And, you know, the link is in the, is in the description of this video, right? And it links uh, to this paper and uh, you know I've provided the links to some of the other papers that Einstein published and if you flip through this paper uh, you know in in the beginning stages he sort of you know Einstein sort of lays out you know what it is the experiment I guess the mental experiment sort of lays it out what he's talking about sort of a uh, ideal situation that's happening you know what the restrictions are going to be right and then slowly he introduces uh, you know his first equation right which is very basic okay and you know take a look at that and it sort of you know talks about time and you know if you're traveling from one point to another point you know I'm not sure if I drew uh, you know the thing here if you're traveling from one point to another point starting at a certain velocity reaching at a certain velocity or a certain time and then coming back and you know lays all this stuff out and you know takes the most basic equation that we have which is the equation for velocity right which is distance over time right if you ask yourself how fast you can uh, travel on the highway right no matter where you are the number that you have right in Canada you know it varies you can travel anywhere between 80 to 120 kilometers per hour right in the United States you can travel anywhere between I believe 55 to 70 miles per hour right that's the speed that's the velocity you can travel at and the units for speed is distance over time right and that's you know one of the most basic equations that we have relations that we have and a nice nice theory of relativity he starts off with that in essence right velocity right very very simple right velocity is the light path divided by the time interval right the time that light travels or the path that light travels divided by how long it takes for light to travel right and he, you know, he, he provides some, some text that, you know, you have to sort of visualize what's happening. And I, you know, drew little things on here, trying to remember what it was, right? And then he slowly starts introducing other functions, other variables into his velocity equation and comes up with, you know, the first sort of equation that he has is this, right? The first you know more complicated equation that he has is this and i'll let you read the paper i'm not going to go into the variables because some of the variables you know i have to sort of think about uh sort of visualize to appreciate and understand right especially when you know and he builds on that and he keeps on going you know there's more complicated equations and stuff like this where he's providing uh you know his explanation of what's happening right but really the only equation that we need is this one to understand why it is that we cannot travel at the speed of light is this guy right here okay these two right here which are the, at the beginning stages of his proof right and it's uh, You know, if you look at the equation, is TB minus TA is equal to RAB divided by, and this part is what we need, C minus V, right? Divided by C minus V. And C is the speed of light, and V is the velocity that something is traveling at. Okay. 
and that right there is a fraction so if the velocity that something is traveling at is equal to the speed of light then we have c minus v and if v is equal to c then we got c minus c which is zero and we get a division by zero and we can't divide by zero that's the reason why we can't travel at the speed of light because in the proof in the mathematics if we travel at the speed of light we get a division by zero it's as simple as that right that's crazy that really blew me away i had been using this for a very long time right through my studies through university and i had never thought about it or i had never been explained to me in this light right that the only reason why we cannot travel at the speed of light is because we get a division by zero in the equations right for einstein's theory of relativity and you know the this division by zero pops up throughout the proof right the equations expand but the c minus v is still down here right when he takes the derivatives of these functions right he gets c squared minus v squared and again if c if v is equal to c we still get a division by zero right and one thing that happens in mathematics um when when you're doing proofs right here's the other one right when we're doing proofs uh when you're solving for for variables you have to take into account uh your restrictions throughout your you know the steps that you go through to solve an equation so even at the beginning before you start solving any type of equation you always state your restrictions because if those you know that is the equation that is the function that you start off with um those are the variables then those restrictions apply uh even at the end when you get your answers right so you always have to look back at your restrictions um before you started solving for for an equation you have to look back at your restrictions and if you got any solutions that match your restrictions those solutions are bogus right uh, and it was beautiful and this this sort of uh answered my question as to why we can't travel at the speed of light and as soon as i read this i didn't i didn't read any more back then anyway i didn't read any more of einstein's papers i didn't track down anything else because uh just looking at it in this light uh, i was able to move on and connect some of the other thoughts that you know i was having uh when i was uh, when i started reading this uh this paper and you know the equations you know when he's doing this thing they they morph and then in this one he's got uh in the denominator you have the square root of one minus uh, v squared divided by c squared and again if v is equal to c what we end up having is uh, uh, it, you know that becomes one and one minus one is zero so again we get a division by zero in this part of the equation as well in this part of the proof as well and um, there's one part here where einstein actually states this thing and it's you know really towards the end which is weird to me i didn't come across it when uh he was stating and some of the equations you know some of his proofs becomes harder i'm pretty sure this is where he contacted his uh, um, mathematician friend uh, to help him solve this equation um or help him through the steps for proving these things uh, the general theory of relativity but let me find the place 
where he actually states this restriction is towards the end. Okay, and here it is. Uh, let me read this uh, one sentence for you. Uh, and this is the equation we're talking about. Uh, energy of, um, so let me read this to you and let me show you the equation actually first so you have this in mind. And, um, you know, if you're, you're really interested in this, you should print this off. It's, uh, it's a 29 page article, right? Uh, sort of a piece that he wrote and it's on page 25. Okay, and this is the this is the equation that we're talking about. Okay, W is equal to what is it? I'm gonna read it backwards. W is equal to m c squared, right? W is equal to m c squared, and basically, uh, and that's E equals m c squared, right? Uh, w um, what he states here is uh, uh, the energy, uh, the energy withdrawn from the electrostatic field must be put down as equal to the energy of motion W of the electron, right? And he's talking about specifically, um, if I remember this again, I read this a few days ago, uh, motion of electron. So W is the energy, uh, uh, energy of motion. Of an electron right bearing in mind that during the whole process of motion which we are considering the first uh, of the equations a applies we therefore obtain w is equal to mc squared and then large brackets right large brackets uh, i don't know what you call them there's a word for them one divided by the square root of one minus v squared divided by c and then minus one in the top right and if and the next sentence he has this thus when v is equal to c w becomes infinite velocities greater than that of light have as in our previous results no possibility of existence right so that is the restriction that does not you know applies uh, if we decide to travel at the speed of light. That is why it takes an infinite amount of energy to get something to the speed of light. Because if it takes an electron, an infinite amount of energy to travel at the speed of light, it will take any mass, an infinite amount of energy to travel at the speed of light. That is why the mass of the object will become infinite. That is why the length you know in one of the other equations i'm not sure if it's in this one or um, the general theory where it comes out where the length becomes zero right that is why time stops and um sorry if this was sort of a long-winded uh you know uh, long discussion on a very simple reason as to why we cannot travel at the speed of light which is basically we get a division by zero in Einstein's uh, theory of relativity and in the equations for the limits of speed, right? Um, very, very cool. Very, very cool. For me anyway, very enlightening. Um, gave me the answer as to why we cannot travel to the speed of light and it allowed me to move on uh, and learn, you know, other concepts that I was, uh, I was trying to learn during that period and this thing has stuck with me it's uh, helped me understand many things in the world uh, that you know I had to reconceal right I had to I had to sort of I mean, basically question that I had um, or questions that I've had in my life where this simple simple concept that you know we cannot divide by zero really made things clear for me anyway right and you know if there's uh, if it's, there's anything here that I'm misunderstanding and if um, you know uh, you think you think you can shine a light on it so provide additional information um, please post a comment uh, because this is 
uh, I'm pretty sure I fully well I know I don't fully understand all everything here that's for sure and, um, and the consequences of what it means uh, uh, to break the boundary uh, for the speed of light right uh, and it's always always cool acquiring additional information and modifying your theories your perspective on life and uh, what you think happens in the world right or what we think we know of the world right and this is for me this was one you know one step forward uh, and i hope that there will be many 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 more steps forward right um, i hope uh, i hope you found this interesting and one other thing i um, i guess i'll uh, i'll share as well uh, and this one is uh, less so uh, set in stone uh, to a certain degree right for me uh, one of the reasons that I read read this paper was because I was trying to get a grasp on you know a handle of what time was uh, it wasn't that you know I just that I wanted to find out what it means not to be able to travel at the speed of light why we cannot travel at the speed of light uh, what I wanted to do was sort of understand get a get a perspective on time that I could manage right and that's one of the main reasons I read this paper uh, because Einstein's theory of relativity sort of introduced the concept to to the world to us that there is no distinction between space and time right there is no difference between the physical plane that we are on and time those things are just one property which is space time so one of the reasons that i read uh, this paper was because i was i was trying to get a handle of what time was right what time meant to us right because i was reading a whole bunch of other books and articles and listening to a whole bunch of other lectures other than physics and mathematics right physics and mathematics was um just a perspective i was having right i was trying to look at it uh from a perspective that would you know shine a light and hopefully for me to get a under, better understanding of you know what space was what the limits of travel were and what time was right and that's you know we've talked about this and that's the beauty of mathematics because mathematics is a language right and it provides a perspective to the world that um uh, you cannot have any other way right it's 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 um i believe it was robert anton wilson quoting someone else uh during um it's an amazing interview where it's uh, basically um i think it's i can't remember if it's seven hours or 13 hours audio interview with robert anton wilson and it's basically it's the title raw explains everything and um the interviewer sits down with um, Ron you know they're talking about everything right they cover everything and one thing that stuck with me during that you know I've, and I've listened to that thing I think three times so far I've, you know I listen to it every few years again just to uh, see what else I can hear right and one of the things that stuck with me uh, from the first listen was Ron was quoting someone saying that it was um, um, uh, it was easier to understand uh, I believe it was theory of relativity or I think it was quantum mechanics actually it was easier to understand quantum mechanics in Swahili than it is in English because they have words that explain what happens or explains what happens in in physics better than English right and i'm not sure if that's true he was just giving an example right i don't know i don't know if it is easier to talk about quantum mechanics in swahili than english but if you happen to speak any other natural languages you'll know that there are words in certain languages that do not translate well into english right and there are words in english that do not translate well into other languages and mathematics uh, being a language you know providing us a perspective on any situation right that we can quantify really because that's what mathematics is 
will provide us with a perspective, right? And for me, after I read this article, uh, one thing that became clear to me, or one, one thing that allowed me to move forward again in my understanding of the world, or, or sort of brought things together, right? Consolidated some of the information that I was coming across, was after I read this, the perspective I had on time, which is one of the reasons I was reading this, I was trying to get a handle on time, what time was, right? And after reading this, uh, this perspective on time stayed with me. And this is the way I can, you know, perceive time to be uh, up to this point. And at some point I may change my mind, but right now, after reading this paper, since then, um, the perspective on time I have is that time is just the property of matter. Right? That's that's what time is to me. Okay, I'm not sure if that's you know I've through the years I've you know had this discussion on different forums with uh, different people where people have mentioned that I can't look at it as simplistically as that. Right, that time is more complicated and, and space is more complicated and matter is more complicated and, and whatnot but no one's ever really been able to uh, provide any answers as to why that is right maybe I don't I don't know the mathematics behind that right that mathematics is a little bit too too complicated for me to comprehend at this point uh, you know at some point you know I'll delve into it and um, you know learn a little bit more about uh, quantum mechanics and more about the theory of relativity but until i do until i learn that mathematics right until i acquire that power right now the way i perceive time to be is just simply time as a property of matter okay and that's one of the other things i got out of einstein's theory of relativity or out of this paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies, right? That Einstein put out in uh, 1905, 110 years ago. And I believe 10 years later, he came out with, um, was it 10 years or 15 years? Uh, with the general theory of relativity, the, the other paper that really, really put him on the map. Um, because from what I understand, when he first put out this paper, only a handful of people um, in the science community really appreciated how powerful this paper was and what it meant to us. Right? And that's uh, sort of uh, what I learned uh, from reading this, from reading Einstein's paper. Uh, on the electrodynamics of moving bodies. And I just wanted to share that with you. And it's connected, it's related to, you know, the restriction we have in mathematics, which is we cannot divide by zero, right? Kicking off from, you know, the video we did as to what the power of zero is, which is basically allowing us to solve equations, analyze functions. Okay. I hope you like, I hope, uh, you know, if this helps you out uh, in trying to get a handle of what time is and what space is and why we can't travel at the speed of light, um, I hope this sort of provided a certain perspective that, uh, you know, some of your questions were answered and uh, maybe, you know, some of the stuff made sense. Okay. And hopefully I have this right. And if I don't, please. Uh, post comments, direct me to the right papers, or explain some of the mathematics to me because uh, uh, it's a brilliant topic and I hope to explore this uh, for the rest of my days. Right. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.